Hi! In this video, we'll cover the modeling tools in Blender that we'll use to make items for Zepetto. Let's first get acquainted with modeling in Blender. I'll use the default cube that comes with the Blender scene. I'll delete the camera and the light to get them out of the way. For modeling, we have to be in edit mode. Make sure the cube is selected, and switch to edit mode. All the components of the cube should be selected. 3D mesh objects like this cube are composed of three components, vertices, edges, and faces. We can switch between component type selection up here with these UI buttons. Vertices are simple points in 3D space. They form the core of all 3D objects. Edges are the lines that connect two vertices together. They are the wires that make up the wireframe of an object. Faces are flat planes composed of three or more vertices as corners. Faces are the only components displayed in 3D. A face with three sides is called a triangle, or tri. A face with four sides is called a quadrilateral, or quad. Faces with more than four sides can be referred to by their geometric names, but are often described as n-gons, short for n-sided polygons. In 3D software, we generally want to keep the faces of our model to quads and triangles. At a core level of any 3D application, anything displayed as a 3D object is reduced to a collection of triangular faces. Modeling with quads and triangles allows us, the artist, to define how these triangles are arranged on the model. Otherwise, a computer is left to make an interpretation on how to turn an n-gon into a set of triangles, which can be chaotic. The basics of modeling begin with selecting and moving parts of the mesh. If we select all vertices by pressing A, we can move, rotate, and scale the cube like we would in object mode. We can select individual components and move them as well. If we shift select, we add to our selection. Shift select an already selected component to deselect. To select a whole loop of vertices, edges, or faces, we can use the Alt key while clicking along the loop we'd like to select. We can use box selection to select multiple components. Box selection doesn't select components that are blocked behind components closer to our view. To box select through an object, we can toggle X-ray mode with this double squares button here. This mode allows us to select components through an object. Aside from manipulating the vertices, edges, and faces we're given, we may want to extend our object. To do this, we can use the extrude tool, either found as a gizmo-based tool here in the left toolbar, or by using the hotkey E. Going into face selection, selecting the top face, and using the extrude region tool from the toolbar, we can drag the plus-shaped gizmo to extrude this face. Extrusion behaves differently with different components. If we select an edge and extrude, it will only create a new plane. If we extrude a vertex, I'll use the hotkey here, a new line is created. To add detail within the model, we can use the loop cut tool to add additional ring loops. We can either use the loop cut tool here in the toolbar or the hotkey control R. Using the toolbar tool, you can see a highlighted line as we hover the mouse over a face of the model. Clicking will insert an edge cut in the highlighted area. Going back to box selection and using the hotkey Control R, you'll see a similar highlight. Using the scroll wheel, we can increase or decrease the amount of cuts that will be made. Left clicking will confirm the amount of cuts to be made, and we'll enter edge slide mode. We'll have the ability to edge slide our newly created edges between their bounding edges, with another left click confirming their placement. If you don't wish to slide the line, Right-clicking will set the line at zero. The Knife tool, accessible from the left toolbar or with the K key, is a tool that lets us cut new edges and vertices along pre-existing geometry. As we make cuts, the preview of the new geometry is highlighted in purple. 
Cuts are made relative to our view of the mesh. Right-click is used to start a new cut. To confirm the cut operations, use the spacebar, and the cuts will be applied to the mesh. To cancel the cut operation, use the Escape key. Now that we've learned to create, we can learn to destroy. If we select a component to delete and hit X or Delete, we can find a menu of deletion options. Operations that say Delete will remove that component and leave a gap in the model. Vertex deletion can be very powerful, but can sometimes delete more than you expect to. Keep Undo handy. Operations that say Dissolve will attempt to remove the component while keeping the rest of the model intact. Edge Dissolve is very useful for removing edge loops. Another tool in the toolbox is to merge vertices together. We can do this by selecting two vertices and using the Mesh Merge menu, or the M key. We can select one of the options in this menu to merge the two points together. Selecting this At First option merges the two points at the first point selected. When selecting edges or faces, the Merge tool will have more limited options. These options often involve collapsing the edges or faces to a central point. Edge collapsing can be useful across multiple parallel edges, as collapsing a series of parallel edges can effectively remove a face loop. Merging is a very useful operation for bringing separate components together or improving the flow of the edges in your model. To patch up holes in our model, we can use the Fill operation. By selecting two like components and hitting the F key, the two components become connected by a new set of edges or faces. Stick to using Fill with either vertices or edges. Using the Fill operation with faces can be unpredictable. Sometimes while modeling, making small changes across many nearby vertices to make smooth-looking surfaces can be time-consuming. If we select this circular icon, we can turn on Proportional Editing. Proportional Editing will make a Move, Rotate, or Scale operation pull nearby vertices with it. The radius for affected components is shown by a white circle while the object is being transformed. This circle can be changed with the scroll wheel during the transform operation. We can alter the tool to only affect nearby connected points by checking the Connected checkbox in the Proportional Editing Falloff Settings menu here. In Edit Mode, you can still add additional mesh geometry to what you're working on. This can be useful when you need a new shape for a different part of the model. Cylinders, for example, are great for sleeves or pant legs. By adding another mesh in what you're working on, you can use the geometry you want for different pieces of your clothing item and connect them together later. This lets you focus on working on the general form of the object without getting caught up in the cleanliness of your mesh's geometry. Many clothes are horizontally symmetrical. To cut down on the work of modeling both sides of the clothing item, we can use a mirror modifier to automatically copy the model from one side to another. To add the mirror modifier, go to the Modifiers property in the Properties panel. This icon looks like a blue wrench. Click the Add Modifier drop-down menu. Find Mirror under the Generate section. You'll see that the model is mirrored across the object's center along the x-axis. In this state, both sides of the original model still exist, with a new section that can't be directly edited. To make the mirror effective so that only one side needs to be worked on, the model must be cut in half. From the front view, find or create an edge loop that cuts the model in half. In X-ray mode or wireframe mode, with vertex selection, select half the item's mesh up to, but not including, the middle edge loop. Delete vertices. Now all that's left is half of the model, and ideally a mirrored other half. Make sure that the middle edges actually line up with the mirror seam. 
In the mirror modifier properties, check the clipping checkbox. This makes it so that the vertices can't cross the mirror line, and make sure that vertices on the mirror line won't get torn away from the middle. Mesh objects are created with flat shading applied by default, which creates the look of a hard edge between faces. For more organic shapes like cloth, it's preferable to use smooth shading. To make our objects smooth shaded, we go to Object Mode, right-click the object, and click Shade Smooth. For areas where you need a sharp edge, like the edge of a collar or a sleeve, it's nice to have an angle at which the mesh will automatically appear sharp. We can enable this setting in the Object Data Properties in the Properties panel, under Normals. Check the Auto Smooth checkbox and adjust the angle limit to your desired cutoff. 80 to 90 degrees is a good place to have this value, but it can vary depending on your desired look. More advanced ways to control edge sharpness will be covered in another tutorial. To make an item for a Zepetto avatar, it's important to have something to reference the size and proportion of the character. For that, we'll use the Creator Base Set file that we can find on the Zepetto Studio Guide website. After downloading the file, we need to import it into our Blender scene. I'll use a new scene for this example. I'll clear out the scene by selecting everything and deleting it all with the X key. I'll then import the FBX. Go to the File menu, then Import, then FBX. I'll find my Creator Base Set.FBX file and import it. It'll appear selected in the 3D viewport. The Creator Base Set file contains an armature that contains the avatar's virtual skeleton and a mask object that stands in for the default body of the Zepetto avatar. The Creator Base Set is imported in this T pose. A T pose is a standard pose for animation in 3D software. For creating clothing, it may be better to put the character in an A pose. An A pose gives a character more relaxed shoulders and arms, which makes the upper torso feel more natural when the character is in a more neutral resting pose. To put the model in an A pose, we'll have to rotate the shoulder and upper arm bones in the creator base set armature. First, to make things easier for ourselves, we'll set all of the armature's bones to follow degrees of rotation instead of Blender's default rotation vectors. With the armature selected, go to Pose Mode. With all the bones selected, go to the Bone Properties tab in the Properties panel. If nothing appears in the Bone Properties tab, shift-select one of the bones in the armature to make the bone active. In the Transform section of Bone Properties, under the Rotation Data, Alt-click the drop-down menu that says Quaternion. Alt-click the menu option that says XYZ Euler. Now, all of our bones are set to use degree rotations. Our use of Alt-click should have applied changes to all selected objects. Now, find the shoulder bones. You can use wireframe view to see and select the bones through the mask, or use the outliner to find the shoulder bones. With both the shoulder L and shoulder R bones selected, Alt-click the Rotation Z rotation properties. Input negative 7.5 and hit Enter. This will rotate the shoulder bones by negative 7.5 degrees on the bone's Z axis. We'll do the same thing with the upper arm bones. Find the left and right upper arm bones in the viewport or the outliner and select them both. Alt-click the Rotation Z property input negative 40, and hit Enter. This will rotate the upper arm bones by negative 40 degrees on their z-axis. Now the armature is set up in an A pose. Using this model as a mannequin of sorts, we can shape our clothing items around the mask's shape. Now that we've gone over some of the core tools for modeling, and have set the creator base set as a reference, we know enough to get started. Use the tools in your creativity, and you can model your unique item. 
It's a good idea to use some kind of reference while modeling. A picture, drawing, or even a good mental image can really help you execute on the idea for your item. A good model can take some time and patience, and a first model is rarely the best. Keep trying and you'll see your own progress. Remember to save regularly. Crashes are always unexpected, and it feels pretty bad to lose a lot of progress. Good luck and happy modeling!